Okay guys, this is Sen from Iceland Gaming. Welcome to the stream. We're going to have a look at Flowscape today. Uh, this is a tool I came across uh, a few weeks back on Steam. Um, it is, uh, I would describe it as a scenery generator, but it's extremely well done and has some really, really, really cool ideas in it. And it's um, actually quite cheap. I got it for $11 or something, which is nothing for the stuff that it does. It's not, um, let's say, um, a sculpting or a terrain maker per se. It's a scenery generator. You will see when I show you the features. And as I said, guys, if I mute the mic from time to time, I'll just continue sculpting and using the tool and get back to you when the noise has died down. They're doing construction work in the, uh, in the building, so um, just a heads up. So there we go. Um, this is how it starts. You start the um, application, it generates a random based little scenery and this is actually how you work in this game. It's based on Unity, the Unity game engine. And um, it is like a game. It really feels like a game. You have WASTI movement, you have Q to get down, E to get up and the usual keys. And you, it, it's quite slow. It's walking, Czernoruski, it's like walking in, in the Division 2. But if you press the... Um, uh, the tabulator key, the tab key, it goes it goes quick. So you can kind of move in and, and out quickly and then do detail work and go slow again. So you see the graphical fidelity is, is quite nice, but let's start at the beginning. So if you start the application, you, you get an, a generated little thing like this. And don't be fooled by the size or by the scope. You can make larger terrains and RP the here, yeah, exactly. And you can make uh, you can make larger sceneries, larger, um, let's say, islands or whatever you want to do. But um, um, also it depends on scale. So if you want to make something look bigger, you will usually work by tiling the textures in, into the, uh, the size that you want. So I'll show you how this looks in a minute. But before we go, let's, let's um, clear anything and go through the tools. We will go through the tools step by step. Take our time, um, ask questions in chat if you have any. I can do that live and show you stuff. But let's go over the, the, um, the UI pretty quickly. So the home is the, uh, the main menu. You actually save and load by going to a little canvas. And this is other stuff I did, other sceneries, which you can save and load um, as you wish. You have a few screens, you can delete them, you can, you can save over them. We'll look at, we will look at exporting actually. Um, so this is how to load a scene. You can save the scene in the same. Just click on a thing like that. And now if you're going to um, load it again, you will see it's there. Now on the import side, you can import your own meshes on your own sky data. You can even import, um, I think, HDR files as well. So you can use them for IBL for image based lighting, which looks quite, quite realistic, by the way. Uh, you can import meshes, but I think it's only OB yet yeah, only OBJ, which is a bit. Mm, I would like to have other formats as well, but OBJs you can. On the export side, it is limited, as you see. The idea is um, to create images and to create um, movies. Now, having said that, if you want to create an image, you can um, upscale the uh, the screenshot. So, if you're going to do a screenshot of a scenery. You can make it um, multiples of the screen resolution. So you have enormously large um, screenshots that you can do, and they're really, really good quality. If you go for, um, let's say, a video, if you want to have this, the animation, for example, uh, you want to have this water animation going, you would need to use a third party tool. So um, I'm using OBS to record the, my streams and everything I do, and you can use OBS or any other screen capture tool to capture this thing and just press space and the UI goes away and you have your you have your scene for recording. So there's no recording tools in the in the program. You have to do it externally. But there's a few settings you can take. You can look at them. You can um, pause, pause the recording later on and um, go over them step by step. I usually left, leave this as it is. It, it's working quite well. Usually you have to crank up the texture resolution to, to high. If you have a strong enough PC, go for screenshot resolution high, and then you're done. Just anything on high and you will, will be good to go. Now there's a help menu. This is the frame, the FPS counter. Now this is V-Synced. If you click on it, you will see it will jump up to, to crazy numbers. Now it's now the V-Sync lock is off. 
So you can put on VSync if you have issues, you can, you can switch it off as well. Okay, I told you how to move. I told you how to, uh, what you can do on, the, on these um, little menus over here. Now let's go over the rest of the top level menu. The, um, this is a painting system. So what you do is you paint things. For example, you go into the, um, we, we get into this in detail, but um, you paint things like you go and paint over that. Okay, Tarnowski, you have a question. So basically, let's... yep. Uh, we, we can uh, we will actually create a scene. I can show you the other ones if you want. Sure, we can go over them. There's um, I have done um, a few different sceneries. One I did is like a woodland thing. And uh, by the way, I, I've also saved movies, so I will put them on YouTube at some point. I have three movies already um <laughs> we'll, we'll go over the but i'll show you some 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 stuff i did and we will go over how to create this thing from scratch it is it is it is really really cool if i show you how this is done you will love it even more and for the for the money you pay for this tool this is brilliant you should buy it anyways i i, I love to support the devs they have done such a great such a great job so this is one thing i did you see what i'm doing here and, and you can still you can move around and you can do all that stuff and everything in here, it actually includes sound, which I'll show you when I, when I upload the uh, the movie onto YouTube at some point. I'll, I'll let you know. I'll, I'll push that to Twitter if I do the uploads. Now, um, there is sound included as well, as you will see. There's, there's kind of this foresty sound going on where, where birds are chirping, a little bit of water. Um, and this is included. Actually, everything you see here um, is included in the application. You don't have to use any any third party stuff to get this like it is. And I'm doing this for all the scenes I did. This is the second one I did. It's kind of an oceany feel. You might hear the, the waves. This is included. Now this is everything you see is included in the um, in the application. And again you can look around, you can see how what I did there. Usually I do this um, for shots like that. I, 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 would, I, I call this uh, places of empathy. So I create a place where I would like to be and just do a two minute video of that and then watch it as a relaxation thing or something. It's kind of a dynamic background generally, but, but it is far more than that. You can do a lot of cool stuff. And I have to say the, the visual fidelity you can achieve with this if you know the tools. I, I, do, create my, I, I do create my happy places actually. But the visual fidelity you can create with this tool is really, really, really good. And I'm surprised to say that, but in this case, Unity does a, does a good job on the visuals. It would be better, of course, if Unreal would be the engine, but um, that, that's how it is. Now, I'll show you a third one before we go into creating something new. Now, this was the last thing I did, and in this case, I think um, I turned on... The effects as well. Yeah, now it's snowing. There is there is some uh, sometimes there's issues. This this is actually the fog in the background, and sometimes you have to when you load this and you have to tweak it because uh, there seems to be a bug in the application um, when you're going for for the fog. Yeah. So the um, the cool the, the really cool thing about this tool is is that let's remove the ground. We see there's there's some. Uh, if I turn it on again, it should be more subtle. So the um, the thing the the atmosphere you can create with this tool is amazing. It's really really cool. Okay. Now this was a bit. This was three examples I did. I think I have one more which is in the works, but I'm not quite sure if this is presentable yet. Let's just have a look. No, actually, yeah, this is the, uh, the latest scene I was working on, but actually it's usually not snowing. It's not snowing um, in the scene, so this this is the next one I'm doing. This is kind of a, a thunderstorm thing, more like that. This is cool, isn't it? I love this. So this is this is what you can do. This is some uh, some examples that I did in the last few uh, weeks and usually I take one or two hours for such a scene and it's done. It's really 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 easy. So now let's create uh, Let's create a new scene 
and shoot away with these with, with the questions we can do we can do anything life and we can have a look at that but you will love how the tools work in this game so i was thinking about um generoski one five sandwich why am i not surprised creepy should know better okay so each time you uh, start a new scene it creates a new shape uh, let's clear that out and let's go through the um through the menu now um we'll start at the right we'll start with the terrain system now there's a few buttons which are cool there's some predefined stuff which is um which is depicting some things you will see in nature quite often there's, there's the shore thing stuff like that we go through them each each it is relaxing by the way so we can go through them quickly so this is the first one the second one we we'll just go through them you see what they do these are seed based random this is seed based randomness so these are seeds if you click on them go away and go back it's always the same it's seed based seed based randomness which makes sense in this in this in this context so there's a few examples you can take them as a starting point there's actually a bowl where you can uh, um, if you want to do this kind of snowball -y thing or fishball you can do fish balls then there's a few more let's go a bit closer a few more you can do i'll just go quickly through the standard terrains this is a river thing going on a floating a floating you can actually see that if i go down it's a floating rock in space that you can do and that's actually they use this for the logo of their logo it's relaxing it is really relaxing to work with this thing um, and for some reason there's a turtle so you can build your um your area your scenery on turtles don't ask i don't know there's a flat thing and you can create which is a nice idea you can create stuff in a book we can we can we will actually use the floating island as a as a star world it's kind of a yeah that the it might be that the tortoise is actually coming from the discord almost that's that's true okay so do i have to sneeze <coughs> excuse me so this is what you can do and i kind of like the book idea too if you want to have this this um kind of um, i don't know storytelling feel you will use the book and, and build a landscape on the book but let's let's do two things yeah that was that was that was role model COVID 19 train sneezing okay so let's there, there's two buttons up here which are interesting one is the random button you will see what happens when i do the random thing so these are predefined seeds they will always look the same if you want to create something new and just have some random starting point thank you 100 points i can buy a t-shirt for that not, not yet no okay so randomness you will see everything is um generated randomly they go through um, pretty fine biomes they have probably set up in their in their backend system there's books there's but you can go on it's actually pretty quick this is the generation is extremely quick so let's let's do let's go through, go through that okay you can do the random generation now if you go into the um slider setting this is a bit more involved but we'll do that when we select our thing you wanted to go for the floating island right so let's let's do a floating island thing now one thing that the um, game developer in you will immediately notice because it's a no go uvs look at the uvs tearing this shouldn't be the case they have messed up the uvs on this on this object so they need to redo that and um, if you get closer you will see what i mean that's not good let's not do that guys they need to fix that uvs um uvs are um, xy coordinates for um, mapping textures onto objects it's like if you unwrap a cube uh, and the unwrapping is used to map textures onto and the coordinate system that you use for that is called uv it's it's kind of x y but but because yeah exactly uvs but um think of it as x and y but because x and y is used for geometry they use u and v for the texture space that's 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 all that is to um to it there's there's nothing more magic on that okay so now uh, but this is no go every developer or every artist should fix this this these are badly made uvs that's let's not do that okay now we have our little we have our little floating island going on but i don't like the uh, how the uh the terrain is set up or the floor is set up let's go to the settings <laughs> that's probably yeah that might be the case here 
Okay, so you have, if you, if you look at the the scenery, you have um, three things you can do. If you have a river in the um, in the scenery, which we don't have here, you will have the river bed and you can choose the texture. But the ground one and ground two are always applied and the mask is all, all uh, two always applied. Now let's select ground one and go for a texture that we want to that we want to have. So we want to have a soily kind of, I want to have a soily kind of basic structure. So let's go for this. And you can do um, ground two, and then you can select another kind of soil type. Uh, I'm not quite sure about that. You can you can um, import your own uh, your own OBJs, but um, I don't like the OBJ. I, I prefer FBX because the texture mapping and all that is 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 is, not a, is a bit easier in, in, in FBX format. But um, there is actually also quite a few models in here, so you might not even need to import your own models if you can live with what's there. But we can look into this. Now let's look at the two textures. I kind of like these two. They look like the uh, there's a bit of soil where we can, where we can pl uh, pl plant trees and there's a bit of rock. But I don't like the how the mask is is, is uh, separating those. So you can go for that and you will see what happens if we select this mask. Now let's switch to the next one. Now it's actually more I like it. That's more I like it. That's even more I like it. So the thing is, these masks define which texture goes where. Um, the texture one goes where the white is, texture or ground two texture goes where the black is, or vice versa, I don't really know. But this is how the mask applies the two textures to the, uh, to the object. Now you can select any of these. Uh, there is a bit of a limitation of the tool, which means that you can't import your own mask. And so far I haven't seen, um, actually I haven't seen a way to import textures, just sky and mesh. Okay. Well, that's, that's a bit of a, a limitation, but still you can do a lot with this. So let's go for this. Now we have our basic, our basic rock, floating rock going, going on with a bit of soil which allows it to um, have a bit of uh, trees and stuff like that on there. Now, if we go into the tools down here a bit more, um, the overall brightness you can set of the texture that you have selected, you will see what happens. Just the brightness, just to blend it in with the rest of the texture, because um, why not? And the other thing you can do is the height. It doesn't make sense here because we don't have a reference point, but you can set the height. And this mainly means how much of it is underwater. We can actually switch on the uh, the ocean and um, look at the height. So now ooh, it doesn't do anything. It should do something here. If I remember correctly, height should actually change here. Anyways, we can look into this later. But I. Uh, Apart from that, the tiling is, is actually a big thing. So we want to make the, the rock look bigger. And to do that, we need to uh, use proper tiling. So I need to scale down the, the, or scale down the size of the textures to have more tiling. So the uh, elements of it look smaller because I want to I be able to, um, to get close and still make sense. And now you see it does make sense if I scale it to that, if I go all the way down, it feels like I'm a dwarf or, or, or an, an ant or something like that. So scale it up. And this is, I uh, mentioned this a while ago, this is how you scale or how you generate scale in the game, not just by making the geometry bigger, but also by scaling the textures to the size that you want. And you can do this with the other elements as well. So um, let's, uh, that's actually a bit too small. Let's go a bit bigger. And let's take this. Let's take this as a basis. Now you have some um, some other things you can do. The train size. Actually, I'm not sure. I think this is pos this is not possible because of I'm using the uh, the floating island. These these two height and terrain size would work with the other ones. We can go through that later if you want to. Now the snow height snow angle is actually something that you can tweak the snow that is available here. If you go for uh, the cold slider up here, actually the coldness of the scene. You can go from zero or from very little snow to um, it's all covered in snow. This would work better if we have, uh, you can see how it scales. 
Uh, this would work better if we have higher height differences or higher terrain with, with more height difference that would work better. But we want to create a warm thing. Now, you can do other things here as well. I haven't really gone into ice, lava, water and land. I have done some sculpting and some painting. Now, the sculpting is what you would expect from it. You go for sculpt, you go for the brush size, you go for strength, you select the strength. And then you have... Okay, actually, I can't do it. Interesting, I can't do it on this, on this model. Hmm. Can I paint? Oh, I can. Interesting. Okay, so this this kind of model seems to be limited. What can do, what I can do with it? So we need to select another one for the uh, for the tools down here. So sculpting is you can raise terrain, you can lower terrain, you can smooth it, you can do stuff like that. It's pretty simple. Don't expect too much. Um, you have um, you have the possibility to do that, but the tools are are a bit limited. They're not they're not um, up to snuff compared to specialized tools. But you don't need you don't really need this in this game. So this is the stuff you can uh, set here in these in these settings. Yeah, I'm not sure. I, I don't think it's pixel textures that they're using, um, but it's the same. It's the same mechanics. It's the same thing. Okay, now, once we have the terrain to our liking, we can populate it. Now, there's a lot of stuff you can do, and now these up here come into play. Let's say we want to have... We, we Let's first look for a camera position. And um, I think I want... I want water. Do we want the, the ocean? Do we want an oceany island? Like this or something? Go for a quick vote, guys. I want to see whether you want to have an ocean or not. Should it be floating in the sky or should it be um, an island in an ocean? Let me know. Fly, fly. <laughs> you can't vote six times. Flo okay, flo floating or flowing? Floating. Floating. Okay. Okay, then uh, there's no ocean for you uh, in this, in this uh, tutorial. Right, so it's floating. Now, floating um, rocks in the sky need some stuff on them. Yeah. So let's start by adding some stuff with a waterfall. I'm, I'm not quite sure. I, I can do a waterfall, but I haven't tried it so far. We can, we can give it a shot. There, there is one, I think. There is a waterfall. But let's start simple with, the, uh, with some trees. I would say this is a temperate floating rock in the sky. So this means that let's use some trees which fit in a temperate environment. And let's, let's just start by... By painting, and I will show you how the tools work. Now, using the scroll wheel, you can... Um, now we don't have blue avatars. With the scroll wheel, you can change the brush size. And depending on the brush size, you will paint more trees. Now, the thing is, this scale doesn't really fit with what we need. This would look like, uh, like a tiny island. We don't want that. Now, one feature that you can do when you paint is you can right-click on the model and it will delete all of them. Now, we need to change some, some things up here. The first of these... The first of these... Um, um, settings up here, the flow of the brush, um, lets you paint many or, um, or few of the elements that you have on your brush. So if you go down here, I won't get as many. You will see there's far less trees coming out. If I go all to the right, there's... A bunch of trees going on like that so we go for kind of a, a, a bit of a really ease on the brush and by the way um, yes I can I can randomize that we we'll go through, over, over that in a minute now the thing is the um, this one the second one is the speed grow uh, the growth speed if you go all the way to the left they pop out immediately if you go um, a bit in the middle they grow which is kind of nice if you like that. If you go all the way to the right, they grow pretty slowly. That's 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 how you uh, how you do that. Let's let's take um, um, this approach. Now this is the size variation, the size of the object, the overall size. There's variation in there too, but this is the size. Now we want to have smaller size because we want the island to look bigger. Uh, might be a bit too small. No, oh, that's too small. So let's delete them again. Let's go a bit bigger. It's like this. What do you think, guys? I think that works. 
Now, the other thing that you do is the next slider is the height variation, size variation. You can go crazy with this and um, you, you see the difference. This is a bit too much. Or you can go subtle, uh, which, which gives you a, a, a mind, uh, a, a kind of homogeneous look or something in between. I usually go to the, to take the middle ground. Hila Franzo. Hi there. Okay, this is the um, size variation. Now we have another one here. This is the, the lean, the random lean. So trees are usually going straight up because of the uh, gravitational center and because of the sun. That's kind of a thing. If you push up the lean, the random lean, they will lean more. It will never be hugely extreme, but a bit of lean can, can make it a bit more realistic. Exactly. Um, rotation is random, by the way. So having said that, um, if you click, let's, let's do it again. If you click on this icon, align to terrain a world, this will happen. Now this looks completely unrealistic because trees will not grow that way. So for trees, you will want this on. For grass, you will want this off. And the um, standard default setting for the application is actually, as I said, for trees, this is on. They will always go straight up. For grass and flowers, it will be terrain aligned. Now, there's a few other things which will not look, uh, not go into uh, this tutorial because this will take up too much time. It will be quite uh, complex and probably require a separate, a separate session. Now, having said that, let's let's go for a for a. Let's actually start a bit of painting and go about that. But I don't like this tree. That's kind of boring. Do we wanna? Do we wanna have this kind of fir trees? Or do we want to, there's too much lean. Or do we want to go for more of, um, I don't know, this kind of style? What do you guys want? These ones? I kind of like these trees. Yeah, let's go, let's go with these. Now, as I said, scroll wheel is the brush size. If you're gonna, if you want to really um, paint the foundation, go big. If you want to be more subtle, then you will Let's push the flow up a bit. I want a bit more, more of these. Let's let's push for them. Now let's find a let's find a nice spot. Okay, now what we're looking for is actually the goal or the target camera position. I kind of think something something like this in the middle of this thing would be cool. Or the other thing would be that we look from the outside onto the um, floating island but let's let's give it a shot now you can do two things with the camera if you pay press page up it will save the spot that you're at if you go um, go away and you press page down it will snap back to the camera position so this is a good way to uh, bookmark camera position for work or if you want to use this for um, animation or for um, screenshots or for uh, recording a video it is, it is um, page up to save a location and page down to go back to the camera location. Now let's um, go a bit more on the grassy side. Let's make sure that we have some nice grass. Oh, that's too, it's far too big. Uh, actually, we could use this size, but a bit more in the background. Let's see. Let's make it a bit smaller. And let's unlock the. No, let's not resync. Yeah. You see the uh, the uh, that's the FPS counter with we sync on and we sync off. You see the uh, when I when I paint something, the FPS is all over the place. So um. Yeah, you, you need if you go crazy with this stuff with the amount of objects, you need a good graphics card. But you can always tone down the quality of the uh, textures and all that, and then crank it up for the screenshot. You can you can do that. So let's go to the camera position. Let's see. Ooh, well, that's boring. But um, anyways, we can do one more thing. We can do variations and um, add some additional plants. Always think of a biome. So you will you will use the plant system or the plants that would fit into this um, into this biome. Now, one thing which is extremely cool is this is a bit of a special beast. If you go to this, the, the, the poisonous mushroom thing, you can do a lot in here. For example, you can place clouds. You can use the scroll wheel 
on the mouse to cycle through clouds. You, so you can set clouds like like, a, like in a matte painting. You can set clouds which are three D models that you can use to uh, to make it more more nice. Uh, you can choose rocks uh, and um, paint rocks into the uh, into the system and do combined rocks like that. The cool thing about this this uh, rock painting is the uh, texture mel uh, uh, the they're quite seamless, so they go into each other seamlessly in most cases, which gives you the opportunity to do nice rock formations. Then you have um, stuff like that, other colored rocks. You can do them, but I don't like them for the color; they don't really fit. And it there you go. You can do as many um, combinations as you wish. Now, one thing you always need to keep in mind, if you go for this, for example, or these four in a row below each other, a special thing happens. Now, look, look what happens. If I press, you will see that, that the, uh, let's go big, bigger, that there's stones falling down. Now, this is an extremely neat feature to make the, the scenery look more realistic, because what happens is they... At the point where you have your mouse cursor, you press, you keep pressed, and as long as you keep the button pressed, um, stones or objects will fall down. This is a physics simulation, so they will fall down and uh, uh, take in a more natural place. So if I press this again, there will be a piece of wood, so I can make wood rain. But this is extremely helpful to make a scene look realistic because they fall in a certain spit. They don't look hand-painted, they don't look artificial. Now let's take the smaller size and go for the, uh, let's make it rain a bit more. Go for the even smaller and use a bit, use a bit more. Now this is how you populate um, a scene and make it more diverse. Now, you can go for special models like this. You can cycle through the models again by using uh, the, uh, the mouse wheel. I'm not quite sure if I have a space for this thing. Oh, that might be that. That's actually that's actually a cool little monolithy thing. Let's see. I'm not sure if you have space for this too, actually. Yeah, why not? Let's put it there. Let's see what else we have. So there's a lot of variation. You see, it's not only there what you see in the menu. Um, for some of them, it's, it tells you to, to cycle through the objects by using the, um, the mouse wheel. So you can do that. Let's click on this one. And there's actually really, 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 really cool stuff. We're not there yet. We're not there yet. You can actually um, do a lot more than that. You can do this one up here. So let's, let's, let's go with it. Since you mentioned it... Uh, we can go through that. So you can actually do the painting, but you can also select objects individually and, and actually change their position. So if you don't the overall painting, you can use this tool up here and um, click on the uh, translation, rotation and scale. And um, then do the, do the tweaking of the single object. You can do every single object you can, you can manipulate manually if you want to. Um, for example, if you wanna if you wanna um, scale scale this this tree up here, make just pick a, pick the middle one because then it's in uh, in sync. The three axes are in sync. You can scale it, and you can do one more thing um, that that's 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 important to know. If you hover over with your mouse cursor, hover over an item, and um, I don't know, let's take this this wood here, and you press delete it will delete the object that the mouse is over. It will do a ray cast. Um, I think probably a ray cast from the center of the screen to the other. I don't know how, how they do it really. But if you have the mouse over it on the 2D screen, it's probably not a ray cast, then it's, it's probably just a 2D thing. It will, it will select the object and delete it. So you can hover over any object and press delete and it's gone. Uh, and so you can tweak the scene quite nicely. So let's do a save. Um, let's take a new one. And let's continue building our little scene. Now there's a lot of stuff that you can do as well. So this is, they're huge. This is something I have to show you when I zoom out. If you want to have, it doesn't make sense for the floating thing, but this makes sense, for example, as a background. If you have a scenery which requires a background image or a background um, matte painting style um, geometry, you can use this and um, 
select that and place it in the background so you see it let's actually make, make it perhaps it makes sense even no not really in this case so you could do this there's a um there's a lot of choices of these pretty fun terrains and they look amazing they really look at this they're really they're really well done so this is something you can do of course you have mushrooms that you can place everyone needs mushrooms so let's place a few okay Chad, you have a question can you navigate the scene with some kind of avatar after you have done yes you can do that there's not really an avatar but you can do you can go first person and walk through the uh walk through the scene it's this icon up here you can walk through the scenery uh, what you can also do is um, you can um, place two markers and then have the camera move between the two markers. This is awkward. It's not well done, um, but, you, but it's possible. It, it's kind of uh, messy to work with that, but it's doable. It, the feature is there. I would wish they would improve that, but it's there. Well, if you, if you go to UE uh, and you want to have one hour of time to use this, you will get nowhere. UE has the full power because it's a game engine which offers you all the tools. But uh, working with landscaping in, 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 in Unreal and um, coming to this level where the texture and everything is applied will take you days or weeks. And you have in this, in this application, you have it in hours. That's not, that's not, you shouldn't, you shouldn't mix these two. That's two different approaches which, uh, which cannot really be compared. I want to see you do that, do this fidelity in UE in, in two hours. And then I'm impressed with the standard tools. The, um, the possibility is there, of course, but in the UE, you do everything by hand. Everything that, that the application offers in this, in this case, in Flowscape, you do by hand. So there's other mushrooms. We always need mushrooms in a scene. And there's, there's some, some stuff that allow you to do... Um, I'm not quite sure if it's really... It's really subtle. You might see these little things floating around here. So you can do these fireflies. You can do the. Uh, yeah, you, you might see it. It's it's really it's really small. Um, yeah, but with possibility comes the effort. I, I wouldn't really compare that. You have the possibility, of course, with every game engine. But uh, the possibility will kill you if you don't have endless time because you do everything yourself: the textures, the painting, the landscape, the UVs. Uh, fixing the uh, the all the kind of stuff which is done automatically in this thing is is you need to do by hand. So the effort is far 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 higher than with this thing. Another thing that we can do is we can let a few leaves rain down. So we have a bit of leaves which cover the scene, which is always because we have trees and we have leaves. We have to have some on the ground. Yeah, and you, and if you're lucky, they even fit together. I know what you mean, but it's not comparable. There's a lot of pre-mates, but usually you have to have several of them and they don't fit. And I have in Unreal, I have six or seven hundred library entries since I'm using Unreal. So, uh, and even I have to do stuff myself because it's not there. So, um, while I agree you have full control in UE, I wouldn't, I wouldn't want to, f to compare these tools. This is not a game engine. This is a scenery generator. Uh, and it's used for screenshots and for movies, but not for full games because the tech is not there. You can't you can't do um, anything else in this in this scenery generator. So this is this is what the, the tool is for. But also it doesn't it doesn't want to be a full game engine. It doesn't aspire to. It's a scenery generator. It's there to create nice sceneries, and that you can do with this quick quick uh, quickly and easily. So if you want control, go for an engine, go for the full engine, and and take the time it takes to to create this kind of stuff. If you want to have quick sceneries or kind of a, develop a background, for example, for UE, you could do it in here and then import the background as the matte painting and use this in the game. Stuff like that would be possible. Now, there's so many things you can do here. You will see this is another kind of feature which allows you to create a, a background. Look at this. This is amazing. Let's go back to the... If you want to have a background like this, you can go, uh, you can select that, cycle through it, Go for something which which fits you can then scale it of course you can do everything i showed you already this is really really cool for creating quickly creating shots like that and uh, perhaps even a complete matter painting complete background for a for a scenery for a game scene or for an area or something like that but, uh, <clears throat> okay now let's see what this does oh this is the um, um leaves floating floating about but I think I overdid it. That that looks a bit unrealistic. So let's not do that. 
there's fireflies you can do stuff like that so this is in this little thing here and what i like best about this really is the uh the physics that you can use physics to um to make it rain and to make it more um more realistic okay that's a bit too much so i have to delete a few of them i was a bit over overdoing it here let's get rid of that and add some more bushwork i think but no that's uh, no it's actually not too bad but that's that's too big let's uh tone it down a little uh, just a tiny bit and then go again yeah that that's that's more like it now let's take one of these things and go for that yeah there we go now this side needs some love as well Them. Uh, perhaps one of these no that's too big that's not working let's take this one yeah that's kind of that's kind of cool hey thanks for following uh, by the way it doesn't have to be static um, what you usually do you can make st static backgrounds with this tool yes but um, you can also do um, animations. So you would probably save an animation. Hey, Simple Sim 72 Hey there. Uh, you can do simple animation, save that, and use this um, as, a, as, a, as a matter, as a, as a movie matter in the background. You can do this as well. I will show you something um, in, a, in a second. So let's do another save. And I, I kind of like this already. Now, let's go on. The camera doesn't have to be static. The, the camera currently is static, but if you use this tool correctly, you can do a background and you can also move the camera. But the scenery uh, and the, the backgrounds in games is always static. It doesn't make sense to have the camera animated because it wouldn't fit in the scene anymore. But um, if you use it correctly, this tool gives you all you need for backgrounds. And you can have the animations, but as, as I said, the tools are not really good. So the camera animation tools in this tool are um, not really good. So it, it is it is fiddly to work with them, but let's 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 look at two two three more things before we go on um, too much of the of the of kill turn. Now there's a lot of stuff you can build. You can build houses. You can cycle through. As I said, there's a lot of stuff you can you can do here. Perhaps there's a tower in this in this little forest. There's there's a lot of stuff you can do here, and and just just fiddle around with it. There's so many little little things that you can do you can build whole forts or um, whatever you want to build but this is not the most interesting part you can have animals in here so let's do a that's a chipmunk or something now we have a chipmunk in the scene you can do a fox which eats the chipmunk what is this it's not, that's not a is this a fox but extremely small let's actually get rid of them and make him make him proper size um there we go and this fox is now through a oh that poor fox Let's move them out of the move them out of the out of the way. Yeah, he takes a nap down here. That that's cool. It is like making your own world. I think that's actually the purpose of this tool. Um, it, it, I would call it a scenery generator. Um, and I did. I will upload them to YouTube. I've done three scenes. You you might have missed the beginning of the stream where I showed them, um, but you can do a lot of stuff. We're not even finished. It's a piece of a world. I, I call it, I like it, uh, I like this tool to do places of empathy, places where I would like to be. And I usually um, work with a tool like that. So let's do another save. Okay, now one more thing. We have looked at the ocean. The ocean doesn't make sense. Uh, if we want to click it on, you have now the ocean back there, but this is probably for a different tutorial. Let's, let's leave the ocean for now. Now, what we haven't touched yet is the skybox. Now, there's two versions of skyboxes. Um, oh, by the way, um, Simple Sim, uh, you can look at the uh, beginning on the uh, on Twitch, and I will I will do probably um, an upload on YouTube. So it, it will be on my YouTube um, channel as well on Eisen Gaming. Um, but but it should be on Twitch. There should be the link to YouTube, and I will probably upload the full video because it doesn't make sense to do highlights on this one. So you can um, uh, catch the beginning here on Twitch uh, or on YouTube. I would recommend YouTube because Twitch will delete the um, the video after a few weeks. 
Okay, so now we look at the skyboxes. There's, there's two versions of skyboxes. The left column uh, are skyboxes which offer the terrain. This is, this is 360 panoramic images which offer the Um, you have to look at the link on on uh, on um, Twitch. On Twitch, in my about thing on the channel, there's the um, there's the link to YouTube. It should be there. And also join us on Discord if you want to. The invite is also there. There you can discuss and and ask questions all the time. We are online almost all the time. Yeah, there we go. That was that was a good um, bot thing. So going back to the um, to the skyboxes, the left column offers skyboxes which have the whole uh, welcome. You have the full 360 um, panoramic system captured. This is good if you need a background. In this case, you have the sky rotation on. If I toggle it off, the, the background will be static. Now, coming back to what Janruski asked a minute ago, if you, if you look at just, um, let's say, a skybox, which is just the sky, which is the right column, you can turn on and off the sky rotation, and actually then you have an animated background it is really slow but you might see that it is rotating there is movement in the cloud so this is how you would do a, a non-static uh, background you could do this the, the rotation do a video which loops and then use this as a background now what you can also do is if, if you don't like this piece of the sky just work with the rotation rotate it around and then make sure that the whole thing fits your scene. So let's go through the skybox and let's look for a dramatic. We, we want a dramatic kind of look. That would be cool. This is really, really strong clouds. That's dark kind of greenish vibes coming from that. Evening sky. Ooh, that's dark. That's kind of cool. I like it. That's really cool. Okay, let's, let's go for... Let's go through them, but this one is my favorite so far. This is really an evening, golden hour kind of thing. This is really in just, just before the thunderstorm or something. Very dramatic. This is the storm, thunderstorm. So if you go for... Let's just, just do it quickly. Let's go for... Uh, okay, so let's, let's, let's uh, continue. This is also cool. Hmm. I'm not sure. I'm I'm torn between this one and this one. Well, this is this is of course it doesn't match because we haven't we haven't tweaked it. Um, it it can't match right now. So this is let, let's take this one. This is kind of an evening thing. No, no, it's not fixed lighting. It's not fixed lighting. We haven't touched this yet. That's the next point. So let's select this. Um, let's, let's look for a good rotation. I think this was actually quite good. Let's let's take this one. Now the next thing that Janowski mentioned is the sky or the moon. You can do night scenes, and this is everything. This is the camera setting. Hey, Kerberson, you have to. You, you missed a lot, by the way. If you were if you were off, you need to look at the video after on. So you have the sun, and the. Um, not in every case. I'm not quite sure if you have IBL um, in the game or if you can just import IBL or HDR files and they use IBL. I'm not 100% sure if they use IBL. I thought so because you can import the HDRs and HDRs don't make sense if you don't if you don't use um, IBL. Um, but anyways, I don't know. But you can tweak that. And always the thing is there's there's another aspect to it. Um, if you even if you use IBL, you will have you will want the sun disk, the physical sun that you see the disk you want in a scene as well it will always be a separate object and this you can tweak you can tweak um, also now what you can do here is the most important thing is the direction as general Ruski mentioned the sun or the light doesn't 100 percent match um the um the uh the scene or the clouds now this is how you would do it this i'm not quite sure actually if it would be something like like this I would assume, judging from the light, that the sun is actually, I don't know. Let's, 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 have, a, let's have a look at the sky rotation. There's the, so the sun is quite low. It will be uh, around here. Uh, let's, let's, make that, let's make that work. Let's see. Kinda, kinda. No. 
kind of like this i don't know so now this is the direction so you can set the direction uh, and the height of the sun well in this case if you look at the sky the sun isn't visible anymore it, it's but the disk is probably below the uh, the horizon already um so we would not to see not not see the the sun anyways but i think it also the intensity is too high for this it will probably more like more like this more a uh, kind of a a colder a colder version of it but anyways you you can go realistic you can tweak it as much as you want and but you also can go a bit fantasy type now this is an interesting slide the temperature if you go all the way to the left it it gives you a warm temperature this is this is a um, um they they actually use some kind of toning on the colors which is uh, i don't know it's not realistic but you can tweak it to look more warm if you go to the left or you can tweak it to look more cold if you go to the right and having it in the middle ish gives you the natural natural color um, you can add external light sources i think this is one I'm not quite sure if it's no, it's not. This, this is water. There is um, there is a way of adding. There we go. There is there's your extra light. Is this what you meant? So you have your light. Um, yeah. Okay. So let's continue on the camera settings. Now you can do sun shafts. Uh, if you have the sun in front of the camera somewhere here, you could turn up the sun shafts and it will show you, show you the god rays that you get if, if you look towards the sun with the camera. Now, I don't know what these do actually. You can put in a rainbow, you can do this Nordic lighting stuff. So you can switch it on or off, there will be a rainbow somewhere. Um, the sky rotation we have done we have done this already the ambient light is, is quite an important one now i'm not a fan of ambient lighting because it washes out every scene it's uh, totally unrealistic and yeah exactly now you can just tweak the uh the ambient a bit if you want to but don't go overboard if you if you go all the way to the right you will, it will wash out the colors it will look completely unrealistic so um, be careful with the ambient light but you can push it a bit to the right to brighten up the uh, the dark areas now you have fog, um, you have two um, possibilities. You have um, ground fog and real volumetric fog. Ground fog would be, uh, let's take the height. There we go. If this is ground fog, you can turn it on and off. Uh, if you don't see anything in your scene, make sure that the height is correct. It might be below the ground uh, if you don't see it. So use the height slider to, um, to tweak for that. If you want fog, or turn it off or go for the volumetric fog. Volumetric fog is usually used for the more further um, fog that you get if you're high up in mountains, stuff like that. You can do a lot. You can tweak the size, the uh, the distance. It always looks like smog, actually. You can tweak, you can tweak the colors, all this kind of stuff. You can play with, um, with fog. Don't overdo fog. Uh, this quickly looks artificial if you or if you overdo that. Now AO, which is ambient occlusion. Ambient occlusion happens if two objects come together in a sharp angle. Um, for example, here you would you would have ambient occlusion because these objects come together at the almost 90 degree angle. Ambient occlusion is um, a thing that happens, as I mentioned, if if the angle is sharp and there's um, there's a little black line that goes between the objects. This is ambient occlusion. You can tweak this. You can tone it down. This will usually make uh, a scene flatter and, and less less uh, realistic. So you need some kind of AO going on. The AO strength can be fairly fairly high, but the AO radius, how how big the um, the AO is going to be, this is the this is the difficult part to get this right. I don't know. Something something around here looks look, look looks good. Just tweak with the settings and um, until until you like the how how it looks. Exposure is what it says. It's camera exposure. You can go all the way up, which blows out the um, uh, the, the image. You can go all down, which makes it black, of course, no exposure. So look at the exposure that you want. Probably the standard setting is about right. So let's let's go for this. The white balance is what it says with the camera. The white balance. You can go for the uh, 
a color toning if you want to. I usually keep this in the middle to have a balance and I, I don't like to play with a white balance because I want to shape the, um, the lighting of the scene with the other tools. But you can do that. Saturation is, well, saturated color and black and white. So you can actually do black and white stuff, which is extremely cool. I kind of like that. So if you want to go for a sepia tonish thing, you would go black and white and then retone it in a different tool. Actually, um, perhaps you can do it if you go for the... No, not really, it doesn't work. So you would have probably have to do this in a, in a separate tool, but you you can leave this, the, the, the saturation as you, as you see fit or leave it at the standard setting. Now, vignette is kind of um, an interesting thing. This happens in cameras too. If you go all the way to the right, you will see that the outer part of the image is blackened. And this is kind, kind of, um, of an eye-shaped thing which, which gradually gets darker to the edges. And this is a vignette. You have this in, in every image because um, cameras have to, the camera lenses have this effect. It's very subtle usually, but if you want to create um, dramatic um, scenery and uh, go for the um, go for the viewer to focus on the middle ground, you can do a bit of add a bit of a mini uh, vignette. It is overused. Yeah, it's probably in most cases it's too it's too dramatic. Bloom, of course, you can tweak bloom. You, you see what happens. You can blow out the uh, the highlights in the scene. You can push them um, as far as you want. You can, you can create this kind of unrealistic bloom effect the threshold is the uh, the you can push it even more you can go like fully washed out extremely overblown things or just uh, make it really subtle it's up to you the aperture this is an interesting thing this is the focus now if the aperture is to the far right the um everything in the scene will be in focus and will be sharp now if you tone if you take that down you will see what happens the foreground gets blurry the middle ground gets um, gets um, it's still a bit sharp, and, and the background is sharp. Now you can you can go blurry as as hell, or you can go around here because the n nothing is um, let's say the eye doesn't work like that. Uh, a scene isn't isn't it isn't the case that in a scene everything isn't focused. It's just not happening. Where you focus, there is focus, and everything around the focus is blurred. It does make sense physically, so you can tweak that here. Um, you can tone it down a bit and make sure that you um, also look at the focal distance. Let's turn off autofocus and let's tweak the the auto for the focal distance. Here is where you decide what's in focus. Is it the foreground? Is it the background? In this case, it's the foreground. You can go into the distance a bit more. And now the foreground is blurry and the mid-ground uh, background is, is, more, um, is more focused. Let's, let's go for this. Let's make sure that we have this area back here is, is in focus for some reason. Now, there is already something going on in this image. I kind of like it already. So this is what you can do. By the way, if you save the, um, the image and um, you come back into the, into the application and some things are missing, um, I'm not quite sure, but I think the game doesn't correctly save all the parameters. I noticed that the, um, in some cases, the aperture and the focus distance wasn't saved, so I had to tweak it again. And the second thing I, I missed is the, um, the, uh, the camera save points. I mentioned that you can fly around and, and, I don't know, look at it from the distance and then snap back to the camera position. Now. It works once you have the application open. Some things, I think, are not correctly saved if you close the application. So that might be a thing that you need to take into account. Now, this is the camera stuff that you can do. You can do visual effects and audio as well. I'll show you some stuff. The upper here, this is actually, if you want to click on that, if you click on that, you get music um, in the application so you're not bored by complete silence if you have no music, no other source of music, you can turn this on. There's, there's some pieces of music in there just to keep you going. This is the UI sounds. I always turn them off because they're too um, too um, too loud and too uh, noisy for me. I don't like them. And these are actually, the, the ones down here are um, scenic, um, scenic environmental noises. So I'll just quickly shut down the music so you can listen to them. The next one. Next one.
and the next one. Swamp. That's definitely a swamp. This is the wintry feeling if it's snowing. And what you see, this is a good example. It's not only audio, they also include the visual effects like snow. And if you want to have snow now um, covering the whole thing, you can go for kind of a slider, make it colder in the scene, and now you have a wintry version of the same scene. Um, no, there's, there's no, not always tooltips. For some of them there is. You see, like, some of them work, but no. You have to try, you have to um, tweak that. Let's go for the next one. It's oceany, kind of beach feeling. It's a summer evening. Thunderstorm. Let's make it rain, by the way. Okay, this is the this is the sound area. Now, this back here, or the last icon here, this is actually where you take screenshots. So, click. It will turn off the UI, make a screenshot, save it in the standard folder. I think it's an app data or something, uh, and then turn on the UI again. So, this is what you can do in a nutshell with Flowscape. We will um, stop the stream right now, we will take it as it is, and I would be happy to answer some questions or get through some specific things, and in the next iteration, where we look at Flowscape, we can go into more detail, look at something specific, or just explore some more features. So do you have anything that you want me to cover right now? Shoot away. We can go through um, some of the additional, oh, actually, butterflies, look for butterflies. Cool. We can go through some of the um, additional tools, but that's mainly it. That's how you work in... Um, I um, If you have an object um, you can send over, I can do that. I don't have any objects here in object format. I would have to convert them first. I have everything in the FBX format. But I can I can provide that for the um, for for another session. I can I can give it a shot. Do you have an object that you want to show the show Bobber? The house menu, sure. If you, Jenna, if you have an object that you want me to uh, import and, and send you a screen or something, I can do that. I can always do it next next stream as well. And uh, if not, let me know and I will, yeah. I can I can just download um, an, uh, an object, an OBJ file, and, and uh, push it onto the uh, import and see how it does. I, I can do that for you. We can discuss in uh, on Discord. So, um, crib above the bunny. Ah, the house thing. Uh, not this house, but this house. Now oh, this is this is objects, and um, you can put in anything, and then you can cycle through them. There's tons and tons and tons of um, of objects here. I haven't even used all of them really. There's a lot. You can do a full village by. Oh, that's actually a frame. Let's let's put a frame somewhere. No. Um, yeah, there's this. This is just one button. This is just one thing. If you go for ships, you can actually add ships. Now the problem is this is physics based, so it would detect water and then swim on it. Uh, this is why it, it behaves so strangely now. Now this is the non-physics ship. You can put a ship in here if you want to. Now we have a ship. Um, you can cycle through it again. There's a small boat. Oh, we have a Viking ship. So there's a lot of objects there already. There's a lot for you to play with um, if you start the app. This is just the basic thing. I didn't do any DLCs and stuff like that. This is the basic application. Now there's, a, there's actually 10, 15 ships, ship types already, 10 or something. Now if you go for the next one, there's, ooh, that's, that's huge actually. This is really huge. Look at this building, this is huge. There's a small, there's a flag. You can put a flag here or something like that. So there's this, there's tunnels. They can you can do a castle, just by using uh, what's there in the game, or in the in, I don't know the scenery generator, however you want to call it. There's a whole cathedral, or um, 
I don't know, a mage tower or something you can do with this. Look, look, this, this is almost a completed big cathedral there. There's a ton of stuff you can do. Look at this. There's so much, there's so much choice. There's even modern or semi-modern building you can do. A completely different style. Another style. This is Asian, a kind of Asian vibe. I kind of like this bridge. I need to use this at some point to... Uh... Yeah, you see there's, there's a ton of different... There's a ton of different things you can do. Uh, just, just... Whoa, this is big. This is a... <laughs> Okay, this is crazy. A whole castle with a million towers or something. So this is um, what you get out of the box. This is everything uh, is included. That's kind of nice, Whitmill. Okay, look at this. This is kind of a Viking vibe from it or some, I don't know, Nordish buildings. I don't know. From judging from the uh, the roofs, it's kind of a Nordic version. Windmills are always good, I agree. Oh, that's actually fire! Look at this. That's interesting. I think you can do. I, I I didn't even know that there's steam. This kind of a platform thing. Look at this. There's there's so much stuff you can do. Look at this. This is cool. I think I'll use this really. Let's put it here and let's let, let, let's make it work in the environment. I like it. You made me find out new things about this thing. This works. Let's see. Oh, yeah, we, we even see it from here. Yeah. So there's there's a ton of stuff you can. Um, you have in here to build your own um, scenes. It, it is kind of kind of a modding, yeah. You can do the same thing in in uh, in modded engines or modded games, modable games, let's say. Okay, guys. Anything else for now? Crip, any any additional questions that you want me to cover while we're live? Um, I can't answer that. I haven't looked at the store page, so I, I will actually look that up. I'm not quite sure if they do DLCs at all, or whether they rely on you on importing OBJ and um, your own sky maps and stuff like that, or whether there is DLC. I don't think they offer everything in one package. So when I bought this thing, everything that I showed you today was included. So um, I don't know. I have to look. I have to look it up on um, on Steam. I don't think there's DLCs really. You you get the whole thing. But what I would recommend if you're really into the um the app, go for their Discord channel as well. They have a ton of stuff going on and they will do um a dev dev upgrade, dev updates and stuff like that in their in their uh no DLC, yeah, I thought so. They do a dev upgrades and, and you know what they're working on. Um so if anything else, guys, you want me to cover now? Let's actually save it again. Let's overwrite the last one. Yeah, we can always take continue the discussion on on our Discord, and um, I will I will get some um, advice from you guys if you want to see the flowscape again with some specific questions or a specific task that you want me to cover. We'll check that for now. <laughs> yeah, for now let's. Uh, Let's call it a day, actually, and um, see you on Tuesday with more Division 2 and on Friday again at 2 p.m. for the, <laughs> I know what you mean, for the, um, for the Dev Toolkit, for the next, uh, for the next Dev Toolkit, uh, Toolkit session. Have a nice weekend. Enjoy. Stay safe. See you. Bye-bye.